Guys, welcome to the I Love Seville Show. My name is Jerry Miller. It's great to be with you on what is feeling like spring. Thank you for joining us on the I Love Seville Show. We're live in Charlottesville. We're live in the Commonwealth, the country, and the world on the I Love Seville Network. We are, ladies and gentlemen, feeling good, feeling positive, feeling hopeful, feeling alive, feeling invigorating. Today, we're going to spotlight a restaurant that means quite a bit to many in Charlottesville and Central Virginia, and that is the Bebedero on the Charlottesville Downtown Mall. We are going to spotlight a handful of musicians that love playing at this particular restaurant, the Bebedero. We'll spotlight not only the musicians, the man behind the institution itself in River Hawkins. We'll talk about the spirit and the energy and how it embodies what Charlottesville's arts, what Charlottesville's music, what its culinary, what its uh, entertainment ecosystem is all about. Um, it's going to be a good show. We are going to go to the home studios of Vincent Zorn. We're going to go to the home studios, ladies and gentlemen, of Peter Richardson, the home studios of Madeline and Berto Osalis. They're going to give us a glimpse of their abode, their casa, their home, and say, Charlottesville, this is what we are all about. We'll start with the man behind it and River Hawkins. He's going to join us in about 15 seconds on the I Love Seville show. We're an, out, we're an advertising agency. We're locally owned. We're proud to be in the downtown mall, and we're, we're proud to work alongside and support and stimulate and, and, and be a North Star and a voice of reason for small business owners across Charlottesville and Central Virginia. We're very proud of that. Two of our favorites, Interstate Pest and Service Companies and Scott Wagner Chiropractic and Sports Medicine. These businesses are in our backyard and they're led and run and employed by people you know and you see at the grocery store, at your favorite watering hole, at any kind of UVA game. Okay, Dr. Wagner and the family behind Interstate Pest and Service Companies are making Charlottesville better. And I know because I see it right now even more than ever with how they're handling COVID-19 in Charlottesville and Central Virginia. Thank you again for joining us. Judah, um, why don't you go to the studio cam? We'll get the back of uh, your head over there. Um, I want to give you a lot of props for helping this network innovate to epic proportions. We have 12 Facebook pages streaming this show right now. And we've had to pivot dramatically, like small business owners and like families and like communities across the country have done. We've had to innovate, we've had to change, we've had to pivot, we've had to remain positive, we've had to challenge ourselves. We're doing it here and we're Skyping people to maintain social distance as opposed to what the preferred method is, in-person connection and human connection that I love so deeply. I'm going to go to the phone lines, Judah, and I'm going to start a phone call via Skype with River Hawkins. Um, we'll see if we can get him on the line. We're going to have River. He's on the line now. Um, he's kind enough to join us on the I Love Seville show. Uh, first, I want to say thank you for being on the program. Um, second, I'm going to say, uh, you know, how the hell is it hanging? Third, I'm going to say uh, everybody's doing this together. Um, and I'm going to get out of your way. The show is yours, River, Haw River Hawkins of the Bebedero. What's new? What's good? How's it hanging? Oh, it's great. Thank you so much for having us. Um, I mean, really, uh, things are tough like everybody else. Um, but, you know, it's, it's been a really uh, humbling experience to, to have so many people rallying behind us, um, to have so much support from the community. Uh, just to find out how many, how much uh, people love us, you know, um, and how much they're willing to contribute has been incredible, you know. So, um, yeah, these are hard times, but, you know, in the hard times, you really see where your friends are, and you really see uh, the beauty in um, humanity, you know. So, I mean, I'm, I've been really humbled lately just with the support from everybody. It's been great. Give us an example of... Um first-hand perspective. 
you're a restaurant owner. There's no industry that's been hit harder than COVID-19 than restaurants. That is a fact. You are local. It's, you are as local as it gets. I demystify the concept that small business ownership is the path to wealth and riches and gold and silver. Often on this program, it's quite the opposite. We try to keep the lights on in our team members with money in their pocket before we do anything for ourselves. Your standpoint, a story that's come across. Uh, yeah, that's how about a story that's come across your desk over the last week or so that really puts this in perspective? Well, um, it's just been uh, it's 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 been phenomenal to um, yeah. A lot of people don't realize. Everybody thinks you own a restaurant and suddenly you're rich or you, you you've been rich and they see the restaurant packed with people and they think you're making a ton of money, but that's not really how it is. Restaurants are always uh, skating thin ice, no matter what. Um, and, and even if you're successful, the more successful you are, the more it, it costs to keep the place running. So, um, yeah, nobody's getting rich off a restaurant. A restaurant only allows you to do the, the, the life you want to live, you know, to be close to cool people and to interact with cool people all the time, you know. So this illusion that all the owners here are wealthy and that um, we're loving life right now is ridiculous. All of us have had to give up our paychecks. Um, so that our staff could get paid, you know, and here's how restaurants work. Uh, one week, everybody works. The next week, the money that comes in from the next week pays for the last week. And so that's kind of where we're at and why we started this fund is because uh, people worked one week and then there was no work after that. And so nothing goes back to pay for that, um, that payroll. So uh, we started this GoFundMe to uh, essentially just get everybody paid off that worked. Um, and so that we can focus on reopening after that. Um, but yeah, as far as like a story goes, I mean, it's just, it's funny people like donating even just like $5 has been an incredible gift. And it's like, wow, I know that these people are suffering just as bad as we are. They're, they're having just as hard a time. Most of them have been laid off too. And for them to even contribute just a little bit of what they have, uh, to our little cause and our little restaurant has been, um, you know, phenomenal. It's been uh, really uh, enlightening. River Hawkins, our guest, guys, he's the owner of the Bebedero. Good man in this game. Um, dude, I feel for you. What do you have? You got mezcal there? Yeah, I'm drinking a little mezcal. Um, I am one of the blessed few that during this time uh, have a, a wealth of, uh, of uh, wonderful spirits behind me to drink. Um, and so during these hard times, I break out the good stuff and I, I drink the, my rare, more expensive mezcals. I'm drinking a little El Bujo right now, a little uh, Pocaro. And uh, it takes the edge off, for sure, you know. Um, <coughs> so hopefully the liquor stores won't close soon and you guys won't be without booze. But um, I'm just lucky enough to have a stockpile uh, for a little bit. Your boy Wilson Ritchie giving you some props right now. You have... I count close to 30 restaurant owners in Charlottesville watching the program right now. Beth Gardner Posilio, I'm messing up her last name. She says, hang in there, River. You're getting props from customers, from musicians, from artists, from your colleagues, from people that are servers. I mean, here's what we really need to tell the story of, okay? The impact of a restaurant, one restaurant, and how many people it touches um, in the community from an employment or, or you know, transaction or support standpoint, River? Sure. Yeah, the truth of it is, man, I really, I really feel like there's more redemption in a bar than there is in most churches in the world. Um, people come here to celebrate. They come here to mourn. Uh, they come here to just take the edge off. And I think, especially during this time when they can't go out to their local bars and they can't socialize, they realize how truly important a good local bar is. Um, it, it's where we rejoice. Um, and if you want to know anything about a society, you really got to look at where it rejoices, not where it suffers, not where it mourns, but where it rejoices. Um, and a bar is, I mean, a bar is the heart and soul of, of most societies, I believe, personally. You got people saying we're going to be stronger than ever because of this river. You got Michael Guthrie, Guthrie saying awesome stuff. You got John Updike saying ole. You got uh, Bob Morris giving you some props right now. 
you have restaurant owners that are in the downtown mall in Charlottesville that are taking a shot with you as we speak. River, this is dynamic. How about the fun? And we're going to have some fun on this program here. Only River Hawkins can have fun like River Hawkins can have fun. We got people asking for a machete dance here. Uh, you got oh, people in Oregon, machete. Oregon, and Washington watching the show. All right, before we have some fun and before we get after it, give us the fun. Give us the who, what, when, where, why the fun. Okay, uh, well, okay, so the last time I was on, I, I told a story, a bar story, right? And. <laughs> I guess I don't have much to offer right now. I can't serve somebody a shot. And I can't serve somebody a drink. But I can offer you another bar story if you want to hear it. Um, <laughs> uh, as most of you know, or people that know me best know that I, I've lived a poor, pretty sordid life. Uh, I've worked at every different kind of bar and, and establishment in the world. Uh, and I've worked all over the world. And uh, um, so a lot of my stories start out like this. I was working at a strip club in Oregon. <laughs> I was managing a strip club in Oregon at the time I was DJing in Oregon. Okay, so like a lot of my bar stories don't have great arcs. That's why I don't like to tell them because usually they're just, uh, you know, this jackass came in, started a fight, we fought, and then, and then we kicked him out. That's what most bar stories are like, and they're not that interesting. Um, but this is one story that actually has a decent arc to it. Um, so I'm working in the strip club in Oregon, and uh, every bar in Oregon has what's called an incident log. An incident log is just a little log where you write down what happened that day. Sometimes you have to say, uh, order more toilet paper, and sometimes you have to say, uh, I have to kick this guy out because he was getting belligerent, blah, blah, blah. Well, the bar I was working at, not only did we have an incident log, but we also had what was called the wall of shame. So the wall of shame uh, was a wall in the back room that was filled with Polaroid pictures of all of the people that have been kicked out violently. So these are the 86. These are the worst of the worst. These are the people we had to have arrested just to get them to leave, you know? Um, and it's usually, it was just a big collection of guys with usually busted lips and they were handcuffed out front and we took a picture of them so that the rest of the staff would know never to let this guy back in. And, you know, then the police would come and take him away. So one night, I'm DJing at the strip club, and I'm watching uh, a very large man um, talking to my bouncer. My bouncer was a little, little guy just like me, about 5'10", skinny white guy, nothing special. And um, this big guy, who was a head taller than him and, and twice the size, um, and pretty much all muscle, uh, was having a discussion with him. Words were going back and forth, so I went down to check out to see what was going on, see if I could help. And I get down, and the first thing I hear is, how are you going to make me leave? And so that's a sign, okay, the fight's about to start. I go, damn, I haven't turned on any music um, to keep the music going. So I turn around to go turn on a song and hopefully keep this quiet, you know. As soon as I turn around, I realize that the fight is about to start, and there's no point in turning on any more music. I turn back around, and the big guy has swung on my bouncer. Now, my bouncer was a cage fighter, um, and so he ducked the bunch and went to go wrap up the what? guy's legs, okay? <laughs> yeah, so he went to go wrap up the guy's legs, but this guy was enormous, right? Um, so I go up, and I grab the guy's head, and I'm going to bring him down gently. At this point, I was still trying to really be nice to the guy. We just try to grab him. I'm trying to wrap him up. My bouncer's got his legs. Um, the fight ends up... We just fall onto the ground, we're rolling around. He's swinging wildly, he's a really strong guy, so I can't get any kind of choke on him. We start tumbling around the bar. Literally, the, the fight starts at one end of the bar and rolls all the way to the, end of the other end of the bar where the VIP lounge is. Okay, the VIP lounge, if you don't know about strip clubs, strip clubs have a VIP lounge, and in the VIP lounge, that's where everybody gets private dances, okay? <laughs> so, so we're just rolling over each other, a big ball of elbows, knuckles, and knees, and we go careening into the VIP lounge. Naked strippers are diving for, you know, safety. Uh, guys with half hard-ons are just ducking out of the way. Beers and uh, flowers and all kinds of stuff. Just falling, glasses breaking, and we're rolling around on the, the red carpet with Holy this shit. guy. Um, 
<laughs> yeah. So it's a big melee and a mess. And I'm trying to get slip a chokehold on him while my bouncer's trying to wrap up his legs. And like I say, he's a really strong guy. So then we're finally on the ground. I'm almost getting the chokehold on him. And he's starting to tire. And I suddenly get this smell, this aroma. <laughs> and it's not a good smell. And um, so I'm thinking, I had time to think during all of this. This guy must have farted, you know? So it, it stinks like somebody <laughs> farted. And I'm trying to hold on him. And, and, and we're still down there for like minutes, wrestling and fighting and holding. And the smell is not going anywhere. It's no, he shot his pants. Yes, he shot no. his pants. And so we really. It's like me, the bouncer, and him all have this kind of realization at the same time, almost this cosmic consciousness. Uh, he should his what? pants. <laughs> and I starts to feel. I think he starts to feel really bad um, because then he starts giving up the fight. Suddenly, he doesn't want to fight as much anymore, and we're allowed to. Uh, he kind of lets us wrap him up and get the handcuffs on him. We finally get the handcuffs on him. We drag him outside. And I'm, uh, my belief was confirmed uh, when he wouldn't sit down. <laughs> you know, most of the people we have to wrestle out are usually pretty tired, and they're ready to sit down oh. at the end of the fight. But this guy not sit down at all. You're um, a one of a kind, River. And now this is... <laughs> Sorry, you asked for something funny. Okay, so like, You know what um, the whole funny part about this is? And here's the really hysterical thing. Is I literally asked... I asked Tell us about the fun, uh, the GoFundMe, <laughs> the GoFund. I said fun, oh, and you thought I said fun, and we got this epic fight outside of a strip club with the guy who, who shat his pants. This is why Charlottesville, yes. Virginia, this is why Charlottesville and Central Virginia so, and the world love River Hawkins, boys and girls. Oh, thank you, thank you. But the story's not over yet. You haven't the end of it. Okay, so like, he won't sit down. And just out of, like, pure malice, because I was angry at the guy, right? So I kick out his knees and make him sit down, and he has to sit down in his own poop, right? And, like, you know, I don't really feel bad about it, because I didn't come to his business and, and start, you know, figurative and literal shit at his right. place, but he did that to me, right? So I didn't feel bad about it at the time. But then the police come up. So the police come, and they're loading him into the squad car. And as they're loading him into the squad car, a uh, turd or poop uh, falls out of his pant leg. Oh, geez. And then yes, it falls out of his pant leg, and they start having fun with him. So the cops are, like, shining a light on his, his oh. poop, and they're like, Hey, River, you the shit out of him. And, uh, <laughs> and so at the end of this... We took a picture of the turd oh. and put it up on shame. River uh, Hawkins. And that's the end of the story. And it sat there for years on the wall of shame, the picture of this guy's turd. Beth? Uh, I hope that wasn't too blue. I know this is Charlottesville, that's conservative and everything. I hope that wasn't too blue of a story. I just want to make people laugh during these I hard times. I love it. I think you made all of us <laughs> laugh right now. I'm literally seeing the feed. People are laughing. And, and dude, that's why I like... That's why, like, we miss, like, I mean, and I'm just going to name a few, like, the Bebedero. That's why I miss, like, Peloton Station. That's why I miss, like, you know, the whiskey, you know, whiskey jar. That's why I miss Dirty Nellie's. That's why I miss uh, mm -hmm. Fifth Street, you know, uh, Timberwood Tap Out. I just miss, dude, and we'll close on this, and then, and then, and then segue to the Bebedero. Bebedero. I just miss going to a bar, sitting next to somebody, right. even if you don't know them, having a couple of beverages, like on a Friday, and then leaving. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. The truth of it is, tapping in bars never happened anywhere else in the world, you know? So um, that's what makes them truly special and why we really got to save them as much as we can uh, because they are the heart and soul of us, I believe, personally. Well, I wish you the best, dude. I'm grateful. You killed it again. Um, the, everything looks good. We'll wish you the best of luck. We're going to hear some live music. Thanks for joining us on the show, homie. Yes, thank you so much. Really appreciate it to everybody. I love you all. Thank you so much. I love it. River Hawkins, boys and girls. River Hawkins, guys. The Bevadero. What a guy. What a story. He brings it. Vincent Zorn, you're on deck, baby. You're going to have to follow this. We're going to now have live music from the home studios 
of musicians in Charlottesville who play the Bebedero on a regular basis. We just had the proprietor, the restaurateur, the owner, ripping mezcal shots at his restaurant. Some of his team members and friends were clearly there watching and having a good time. He told great stories. You see why River would be a great restaurant owner and a great bartender. I mean, it's just freaking hilarious every time he comes on the program. Now we're going to go to people that play the Bebedero as we make a push to save this fabulous restaurant. Judah, will you do me a favor and get the graphic on screen again? And if you just go to GoFundMe and search the Bebedero, you will, uh, you will see what we're looking for. Um, I'm calling Vincent Zorn now, Judah, just to give you a heads up. We'll get him on in T minus 10 seconds or so. Give me a verbal cue when that's ready. And we'll hear some music on a Friday on the I Love Seville show. River Hawkins, you are amazing. Uh, I'm a huge fan of you. Uh, Vincent Zorn is going to join us in T minus six seconds. Welcome to the program, my friend. Um, how are you, Vincent? Hey, Jerry. How are you doing? I'm doing extremely well. Uh, we're going to throw this question to you before we hear music. One of the things that you do amazingly well is play live music. I really, you know what's really cool? When you sit close up like that with the guitar, it kind of chops off part of the guitar and it makes it look like, yeah, right there. I know. Look at that. You're so talented, Vincent Sword. <laughs> I've got my kids running the fog machine behind me. I like it. I like it. All right. All right. What's the Bebedero mean to you, homie? <clears throat> Man, first of all, I got to say, never will I follow River again. <laughs> it does. <laughs> I hope you're watching, River. He is. Um, good Lord. Um, well, the Bebedero means exactly that. River <clears throat> kind of embodies. <laughs> That's how we all feel when we're there. We're playing. When we're playing music at the Bebedero, it's just wild west. It's so much fun. You never know how the, the night is going to evolve. At times, it'll be nobody in the restaurant, and then an hour later, it's packed, and people are dancing. The walls are shaking. The, the, you know, the bricks are rumbling. And um, it's just a blast. It really is. And from someone who is not local, haven't, hasn't been here that long, to, to come in and land as a musician in that place, I could not be more grateful. So uh, I'm here to help the best I can. I've already donated my, um, uh, mon monetarily, but I want to put my time in as well. So. Great answer. Get the graphic on screen again for us, if you could. Judah Wickhauer, John Updike, one of your colleagues at Roy Wheeler Realty Company, is watching right now. And oh. He said, I just donated to the Save the Bebedero Fund. I got Tim, who's watching the program now. He says his wife is donating right now to the Save the Bebedero Fund. Get that on screen again, if you could. Thank you, John Updike. Thank you, Tim, for donating to this fund. Um, we're going to hear some live music in a matter of moments from you. Um, River Hawkins, one of a kind, dude. How, how do you describe that? How do you describe River Hawkins? <laughs> You're good at pulling the stories out of him, I'll tell you right? that. Right? So, so I don't know if the audience knows that uh, before we do these shows, you say there are no rules, right? That's right. There are no rules. And I'm like, whoa, hold up. Do not tell these guys there are no rules. And <laughs> River's always good for a great story. And not all the stories start with once, once, in a strip club, but uh, he is great at stories. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you're the, I don't have any strip club stories. <laughs> when you're the host of a talk show and one of your guests comes on your program and says, all right, I got a story for you, Jerry, and it starts like this. One night in the strip club, you stop talking and you just <laughs> listen to your guests and you just give them the entire program. Just like we're going to do here with Vincent Zorn from a guitar standpoint. Before we do, you've got a lot of people watching. Rebecca Templeman, hello. Bashir from Bashir's on the downtown mall. He's watching oh, as well. Awesome. Um, I'm counting over 20 restaurant owners watching right now. Your boss, Michael Guthrie, has got a little bit of a zing here. He goes, good thing you still got a day job over there, Vincent Zorn. Uh, I like. I'm at, I'm at lunch. <laughs> He's at lunch right now. <laughs> um, all right, we're gonna get out of your way, Vincent. The show is yours. Give yeah. us, uh, give us some music, baby. All right, man.
Ole! That's what I'm talking about. Wilson Ritchie says, Vincent Zorn, you are the man. We got more donations coming in for the Bebedero Fund. Rede Rebecca Templeman says this, can someone paste the link to donate in the comment section? Get the link back up on screen on a graphic. I will just say, anybody that's watching the show, and I have nine... Uh, ten different states watching the program and a ton of folks in Charlottesville and Central Virginia right now. Michael Guthrie just posted the link in the comment section. This is the power of social media when it's used for positivity here. Vincent, you are a badass baby. Tell us about what you just played. Tell us about the style of music that you play. Wow. Well, my style comes from the south of France. It's not flamenco. It's gypsy rumba. Uh, it's, a, it's another, only two cultures in uh, the, the world play flamenco Spain and the south of France um, improvised a bunch of little pieces amazing how nervous you get when uh, Jerry Miller's looking at you <laughs> <laughs> I've only played that millions of times um, uh, I don't know it's just have fun man we're just trying to have fun we can't we can't play gigs but we can still have fun and this is the way we're doing it and thank you for being uh, kind of the canon that can Put that out there. Props to you. Thank you. Um, one more question, Vincent. Uh, music yeah. in Charlottesville, music across the world. It's the world's language. Music is the world's language. Put the graphic on screen again if you could, Judah. Um, the Bebedero from a music, family, culture, food, mezcal, River Hawkins, ballsy, crazy story <laughs> standpoint. I mean, one more time. What's it, what are you seeing? Give us a story. What's it mean to you? <clears throat> huh. It's just a, it's a collective of artists. I mean, from the floor to the ceiling, everybody that works there is an artist. Um, River surrounds himself with uh, creative people. And we all kind of fell into this house called the Bebedero. And everybody just is smiling, even though it's, it's a tough gig, man. Working in a restaurant is hard. We are kind of restaurant royalty. We play music. We do not work as hard as everybody in that restaurant. Back of house, chef is creating some amazing dishes. They're, uh, they're running a, a great special right now for uh, three nights of dinners for four for $99. Check it out. It's a great deal. Um, and it's just a collective good vibe. It's just a great vibe. And uh, we need more places like this. We have a lot. We're fortunate here in Charlottesville. But the Bebedera is very special to me especially. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. Um, thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you for helping organize this interview. Vincent, the point of contact for this lineup of guests that you're seeing. Vincent Zord, a uh, talented marketer. Um, Vincent Zorn, a talented <laughs> evangelist of, of music, a talented musician. Charlottesville is lucky to have Vincent Zorn and his family in the community. They're new to the community, and quickly they've done a phenomenal job of assimilating themselves and integrating themselves into the community as stewards of the Charlottesville name. Thank you for coming wow. on the show. I'm, I'm, I'm great for Vincent. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Thanks so much. Our pleasure. Vincent Zorn, guys. He plays the uh, Bebedero on a regular basis. We're going to continue the live music. Judah Wickhauer. I'm going to try to get our, new, our next guest on the show, Peter Richardson, who also plays the Bebedero. You see what we're doing? We are humanizing. We are localizing. We are personalizing a small business that means a lot to people in this community. Humanizing localizing and personalizing this brand. And we're letting you know what we're seeing. We're, we're not even letting you know, we're showing it. You're hearing the stories from the people that walk over the creaky hardwood floor, that walk up the steps, and maybe for the first time don't know what the Bebedero is about and get to the top of the steps, and they're like, wow, this is bright. And the tabletops are gorgeous. And the mezcal collection is epic and deep and robust. And look at all these pretty people working around here. Okay, I may have noticed the pretty ladies that work at the Bebedero. That's what we're trying to do here. Okay? Judah, I'm going to go and try to get Peter Richardson, a guitarist that plays the Bebedero on the line. It's rigging now. And we're going to get his take on the program, on the I Love Seville show, and find out what this watering hole means to the community. And one thing you can take from this segment and this interview in totality is this is one watering hole. 
okay? But we all have that connection or that affinity or that tie to a small business that means a lot to us. The connection that we're showcasing here, and Peter Richardson's going to join us in 10 seconds. The, the, the connection we're showcasing here between a brand and a restaurant in a community can be applied to any industry. Peter Richardson is kind enough to join us here on the I Love Seville show. You have 15 states watching. You have a number of your colleagues, Peter, from the music industry watching, um, especially locally in Charlottesville. You have a lot of the restaurant owners watching. The show is yours. I'm going to get out of your way. Um, thank you for joining us. And what does the Bebedero mean to you? Thanks, Jerry. Great to be here. Um, wow, Bebedero means a lot to me. Um, I heard you say the word uh, watering hole. And I know that, you know, beber in Spanish is the verb to drink. So Bebedero is, you know, a watering hole, but it's so much more than that. It's uh, um, an amazing restaurant, you know, with authentic Mexican cuisine from Veracruz, which I, I've been there and I can attest that that is actually very authentic and just delicious. Um, and uh, I, I've been playing at Bebedero since uh, they opened uh, in, the, in the glass building years ago. And um, it's become this awesome hang for musicians, dancers, uh, people that are into Latino culture, you know, all, all kinds of things, all, all kinds of demographics. But um, it's just been this uh, amazing uh, artist haven, uh, if you will. And um, a huge supporter of the arts of, of musicians, you know. Um, we've been there th uh, for several years through thick and thin. You know, there's always the... the the time of year when business is slow and, um, you know, uh, with a lot of musicians, you know, your, your gig might be on hold for a little while over the winter while, while things slow down. And uh, that was never the case at Bebedero. You know, we always, um, we always got a lot of uh, loving support from, from all those guys. You know, I really appreciate uh, River and Will and Josh. You know, all, all of them have been very supportive of us. And so... Bebedero has been a place where um, a lot of creativity has been able to take place and grow. Um, I'm there on Monday nights. Uh, I, I alternate every other Monday night with another guitarist, Miles Pierce, and we both play with uh, accordionist Matty Metcalf, and we do um, music from Argentina, uh, tango music, and... Um, we also include uh, Justin Esposito, a local violinist, um, and, and that's just been so fun. Uh, and it's gone on, you know, it's been an ongoing thing for years now. Um, also, I play with uh, Umberto on Tuesday nights, and, um, you know, we all kind of collaborate on a lot of different projects. So, um, Bebedero uh, means, um, to me... Uh, a place where we can all get together and create and people can come in and uh, experience that and absorb that um, as well as amazing food and incredible drinks. Uh, and I say drinks, but really um, there, there's um, an artistry there where they're creating their own drinks. But um, I've always been interested in Latino culture and um, food, drinks, music, art, and um, River has been totally instrumental in my education of tequila and mezcal, and uh, my <laughs> my knowledge has grown exponentially in the time that I've known him. So uh, there there are many things that I appreciate about Bebedero. We just got a uh, another donation. Oh, great! Um, Judah, keep the link going on screen. We're making an effort to save the Bebedero guys. Get the GoFundMe link on screen. Um, John Updike, thank you for that fifty dollar donation. Um, six people just donated. The notifications are saying on screen as we speak. 
Peter, we're going to ask you, and, and Wilson Ritchie's watching the program, and Wilson Ritchie says, Peter, thank you for the amazing music you play. Oh. Grace is watching the program. I'm watching in Belmont. Peter, I've seen you play many times. You are very talented. Thank you for the oh, amazing you. music you play. I'm hearing this from Laura. I'm hearing this from Chris. I'm hearing this from Monk as well. They're all giving you compliments about the amazing music you play. I'm going to get out of the way. We would love to hear some of that amazing of music on on this network peter great well i would love to play something for you um i'm going to start with a uh a song that is kind of um one of the the latin standards certainly for guitar players but um this is a song from brazil called black orpheus it goes by many different names um it's from the movie black orpheus uh, the, the Portuguese title for this is Manhã de Carnaval, which means Morning of Carnival. And um, some people might know it by its English title, which is A Day in the Life of the Fool. But this is Black Orpheus. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Last question, and thank you for the talent. You truly have a gift. Uh, thank you for sharing it. You made our day brighter. Last question, Peter, one more time. The Bebedero, we're making an effort to save it, to donate it, to get involved with the GoFundMe. Anywhere you want to go on this, why we should donate to the GoFundMe for the Bebedero. Well, there's not many places like this that, ex that exist in Charlottesville or anywhere else that I know of. Um, and it would be such a shame for this to go away. I mean, you know, I, I've had a few um, other similar situations where, you know, 
this artist community has popped up and then it had its life and then it kind of drifted away and people went off and did other things. But it, it's not time for that yet. This needs to continue. It's at its peak. I mean, if you come in on almost any night of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, these are all huge nights and um, you're going to see amazing things that happen spontaneously. So many nights we've had our, you know, uh, tango dancers show up and just get up from their tables. We didn't even know where they were there and just start dancing to our music. Mm -hmm. And that happens Tuesdays and Thursdays when Berto and Vincent are there, you know, where, I mean, it's just uh, such an amazing hang. And, and it's the people that come in and support it, as well as the musicians. And of course, you know, the Bebedero and their support of the, of the art scene in Charlottesville. So this can't end. We all need to do whatever it takes to allow it to continue. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good one. Peter Richardson's guys. You too, Jerry. Thanks so much. Our pleasure. Our pleasure. Absolutely fantastic. Peter Wilson Ritchie has this to say to you. Um, you're super talented, and thank you for the amazing music. And Wilson adds, and he's the guy behind the whiskey jar and, and, and partially behind the Bebedero. Wilson says, the Bebedero has some of the best musicians in town playing nightly, and we miss them so much. And then he adds a lyric from a song, and I think it's fantastic. And Judah, I'm going to get Madeline Silas on the uh, phone, on, on Skype here very, very, very soon. Um, Wilson adds this to the stream. It's poignant. Carlos Santana lyric. Whether you are doing it in the bar, the church, the strip joint, or the Himalayas, the first duty of music is to complement and enhance life. That's beautiful. Carlos Santana, whether you are doing it in the bar, the church, the strip club, or the Himalayas, the first duty of music is to complement and enhance life. One item that is being overlooked in this brave new world we are in, a COVID-19 world, we're talking about the economy. I'm screaming the support for small businesses in the local economy. This is hard. Restarting something that's from zero, ground zero from an economy standpoint is on a different level of hard as well. So we don't want that. That's why I'm screaming support. One thing that's being overlooked is the music community has lost a platform or it's lost a... a a venue and restaurants offer more venues for local musicians across the globe than music venues themselves do because there's more restaurants so when restaurants close yeah we can't go to our favorite place and that is huge it's one of my favorite things to do but we also can't hear our favorite musicians do what they've been blessed with and that's I want to say demoralizing because I'm a positive person, but it is a little demoralizing. Very little things in life I like better than spending time with my wife and our son at a local restaurant. I usually have a craft beer in front of me. She has a craft beer. We're listening to live music and we're eating good food. I'm going to go to the phone and I'm going to welcome Madeline. Uh, Madeline, we're going to call you in T minus 10 seconds on the I Love Seville show where we try to showcase the best of Charlottesville, Virginia. Get the on screen graphic on for us, Judah. I also have Madeline on hold for us. Madeline, we're going to go to you in five seconds, about 10 seconds, once we get the uh, A OK from JW. Um, Give us that, uh, the volume on the back end, if you could turn that down for us. Judah, we sound, we look good on that end over there? Okay, we got the A-OK. -okay. Welcome to the program, guys. Madeline and uh, Humberto Quepasa, amigos, you are live. Uh, we have many states watching. You have your home country watching right now. Quepasa, welcome to the show, guys. Hola, Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Jerry. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Our, yeah, our pleasure. The Bebedero means so much to you guys. What does the Bebedero mean to... Uh, arguably the uh, best-looking um, couple in music in Virginia right now. <laughs> oh, man. The Bebedero is a magical place where many things happen, uh, including meeting great 
people, great friends, great stories, amazing food and drinks, amazing artists that go by that place and you know the support that they give to local musicians it's in a magical place there for me i'm very happy to be able to be there and express my art at the Bebedeva. yeah i agree and i started i thought this would be a good kind of musical segue for us it's not finished but i started a song about the bebedero that i thought would be fun to just give a little little bit of a taste of and I'm going to, it starts in English, so I'll just do a verse into a, a chorus. And the chorus is in Spanish, so I'm going to translate it real quick so you can get the meaning of everything. So it, it'll say, Que me lleven al bebedero, take me to the bebedero, que tiene todo para mis gustos, that has everything I love, comida rica, viene del corazón, delicious food that comes from the heart, Tiene fuego, tiene alma, it has fire. If you've ever seen River sometimes <laughs> making a few drinks. Fire, it has soul. Um, take me to the bebedero. So here's a little bit of that. Love it. <laughs> magic it's another world i'll take you there just come with me we'll climb the stairs que me lleven al bebedero que tiene todo pa mi gusto que me lleven al bebedero comida rica viene del corazón que me lleven al bebedero tiene fuego tiene alma que me lleven we'll finish it <laughs> oh that's beautiful that's beautiful and listen to this uh stella maurice says lindos uh, you're getting people that say they love that song and they can't wait to hear it again madeline it, it, it clearly means a lot to you this restaurant and, and and this is important to emphasize and like we love music we love food we love mezcal i mean this is arts this is culture this is a lot i mean this is this is so many different niches the bevadero mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yes it is yes it is it really is yeah it means a lot to us and berto has as you know plays there quite frequently and i've just started playing with him this year but i'm happy i'm thankful for the bevadero for him and even for our relationship because as musicians that work together all the time and live together all the time it actually give when when it's not us playing because he does he plays other tuesdays with other musicians and every thursday with vincent he always has a fun story to tell me the next morning at breakfast we had a fun story because he's been playing with the band. <laughs> i love it i love it hey hey wilson's got a message for you wilson richie he says um i cannot wait to see you guys again. I miss you. I love you guys. We cannot wait to have you fill our place with joy and happiness. Britta Keller says hello from Britta. I love, love, love you guys. Manuel Salas, congratulations. You guys look fantastic. Um, so many people. How about this? We're, we're going to stretch the rules a little bit because we have no rules. And it's not every day we get to hang out with you guys. Can we hear mu more music, guys? Yes. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Yes. And before I want... Forget, um, we're going to play um, a tune that feels very appropriate right now. But I, I also wanted to give a shout out. So please um, contribute to the GoFundMe for Save the Bebedero. It means so much to us and so many people. But we've also been influenced <coughs> and are very thankful uh, for other restaurants in the area that we wanted to give a quick shout out yes. to. Um, Bashir, the Bashir family, my sister told me yesterday she got lunch takeout from him and it was amazing and delicious. I know he's doing takeout for lunch. He's watching right now. Bashir's watching now. Hey, yeah, Bashir! Bashir. Um, and Wilson, thank you. A couple of weeks ago, they, the Whiskey Jar posted that they were going to give free meals to musicians, which was amazing. Amazing. Was generous. Yeah. Thank you so much. And then one of the first places we played, who I know are also offering family meals, so that's another way to support all of these people. I've noticed the Bebedero has their cantino dinners and Whiskey Jar does family meals. Maya was one of the first places yes. we played. My restaurant. Yeah. For a long standing with the flamenco dancers. And we had yeah. so much fun. So we just wanted to give shout outs to the, the specific restaurants that have helped and influenced us as well. And the song that we're going to play is called Love Where You Are. Yes. It's kind of self-explanatory. <laughs> She sits 
under the windowsill, watching floating leaves fly. Memories of longer days drift by. Now the evenings enter, softly as a whisper. Promises of ample time to daydream. Relax your mind, she is cool and say, take your time. It's time for wonder, take it slow. Go with the seasons and you know it's okay. Life is slow. Learn to love the right way. Oh, you are so good. Bashir says this. Bashir says, I'm watching my favorite musical couple. Stephanie Maza says this. I love the first song so much already. Thank you, guys. I miss you so much. Maggie Thompson, you guys are so awesome. John Freeman, great to see you and to hear Berto and Madeline. Great to see you guys. D. Claudia, I want to share your feed. You guys are amazing. Bashir says, you sound amazing. Tanya Ray is watching in New Jersey. She says, you guys sound amazing. I mean, it's just, it's, it's great. Isn't it a great day to be alive? Yes, yes, it yes. is. It is. It's yes. a sunny day. It's a beautiful day. Beautiful. You want to hear? You want to hear a song about sunshine and love? Please, I would love to. I would love to hear it. This is about this guy. Right here. 
with your heart <laughs> around me. talking about it. Guys, you want to know something awesome? Berto, let me just ask you a question. What is it like to have a song written and sung for you by a beautiful lady that happens to be your wife? The luckiest man in the I world. <laughs> God damn, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys want to hear something awesome? This literally just happened while you guys were singing. I'm hitting refresh on the GoFundMe. And a gentleman or a person by the name, a female by the name of Rondalyn Robinstein literally just donated $200. Wow. That is amazing. Thank you, Rondalyn. Thank yes. you. Wow. I love you guys. Um, you're going to appreciate oh. this. Okay. A lot of comments came in, but I'm going to give you the one that I think you might love the best. This is from Stein Christensen. I love you guys. You are the most lovable and wonderful couple in Charlottesville. You are so talented. And I echo those. Thanks, oh, thank thank you. you. Thinking of him, I know it's, he's a pilot. I'm sure this is a hard time for him now. So thank you. Thank yeah. you for coming thank on the show. Thank you for the music. Enjoy your weekend. Stay safe. Thank you. You, you too. too. Thank, right. you. thank you, guys. Thank they you. killed it. They absolutely killed it. Judah, get the graphic on screen again. Um, we're going to save the Bevadero. We got to go fund me. Um, I want you guys to leverage the power of social media. And there you see the stream. I'm literally listening to the musicians play in this ear and then checking the audio stream with this device on the other ear because it's about a 10 second delay from what I'm hearing and what you're hearing. But I'd like for you to go to the website and you could just Google um, Save the Bebedero and GoFundMe and the link is going to show up. We're putting it on screen now. Support the, support the restaurant, please. Support the restaurant. And this is just kind of like a microcosm of the support we need to offer everyone. We're in unprecedented and uncharted territories here. And I, it's going to get harder before it gets easier. And we all know that. But we're going to remain positive. We're going to pivot our thinking when we need to. And we're going to do it together. We're going we're gonna to get through this. I'm so confident that we're going to come out on the other side of this better than we've ever been as a community. I'm so confident about it. In our community, and we have people watching in 16 states now, 15 states, 15 states now. In our little neck of the woods in Charlottesville, Virginia, we had a pretty um, serious and, 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 and world-impacting event, certainly country-impacting event, on August 12, 2017, when a terrorist attack happened um, that was tied to racism and statues and bigotry and nastiness. And the community, since August 12, 2017, in less than three years, has come together so strongly. And the benefits that I've seen from August 12, 2017 in my neck of the woods is more communication, more prioritization on topics that matter, like affordable housing, like being good to each other, like uh, supporting the people in the community that need the support, okay? Less about me and more about us is what I've noticed. And that's the same thing that's gonna happen from COVID-19, not only in my neck of the woods, but in every neck of the woods in this country, this world. We gotta do it together. I'm Jerry Miller. It's the I Love Seville show. Save the Bevadero. Save the world. We got this. Enjoy your weekend. Take care.